Pneumonia is the most important of the pulmonary infections. It can cause a lot of morbidity and mortality if not treated. Before we begin this complete yet concise review, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Ok, let's get started. Pneumonia is defined as an infection of the pulmonary parenchyma. This includes the alveoli, bronchioles, and interstitial tissue. The pathophysiology of pneumonia is initiated with the entry of microorganisms into the lower respiratory tract. In the alveoli, these bacteria are engulfed and killed by the alveolar macrophages. Pneumonia occurs when the microorganisms cannot be killed by the alveolar macrophages. In this case, the host inflammatory response mediated by several cytokines causes alveolar infiltration by neutrophils and increased alveolar capillary permeability. The latter leads to exudation of fluid. This results in clinical syndrome of pneumonia. Initially, the exudation has red cells and neutrophils, therefore adds a pinkish color to the yellow colored purulent sputum. Later on, there is mainly a purulent exudate made up of neutrophils. Viral pneumonia leads a colorless mucoid sputum unless there is a secondary bacterial infection. Now let's see how we can classify pneumonia. Pneumonia can be classified based on where the infection was believed to have been acquired. Community acquired pneumonia, healthcare associated pneumonia. The healthcare associated pneumonia can be further divided into hospital acquired pneumonia and ventilator associated pneumonia. There are special categories of pneumonia too pneumonia in the immunocompromised patients and aspiration pneumonia. This classification is useful because the causative organisms vary according to the environment from which the organism may have causes the infection. Pneumonia can be classified based on the pathological and radiological patterns into loba pneumonia and also bronchopneumonia. In this video, I will mainly focus on community acquired pneumonia. For community acquired pneumonia, there can be bacterial pathogens, viruses and other types of bacteria. Now let's see the common etiologies for community acquired pneumonia. Bacteria such as streptococcal pneumonia, Haemophilus influenzae, Mycoplasma pneumonia, gram-negative bacilli, Staphylococcus aureus, Moraxella cataralis, Legionella pneumophila, Chlamydia pneumonia are examples for bacteria that can cause community acquired pneumonia influenza virus para influenza virus respiratory syncytial virus and adenoviruses can also cause community acquired pneumonia mycobacterium tuberculosis pneumocystis carinae also can cause community acquired pneumonia there are risk factors for community acquired pneumonia people with alcoholism can acquire pneumonia from Streptococcus pneumoniae, oral anaerobes, and Klebsiella. Patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease can acquire infections from Haemophilus and Pseudomonas species. Patients with structural lung diseases can acquire infections from Pseudomonas Staphylococcus aureus. Patients with dementia, stroke, and altered consciousness can acquire infections from oral anaerobes, gram-negative enteric bacteria. Patients with altered consciousness have a risk of aspiration that can cause aspiration pneumonia. Now let's focus on investigations to confirm the diagnosis. Full blood count with neutrophil leukocytosis and high CRP levels indicates the presence of an infection. Chest X-rays, posterior anterior view is the key to confirming the diagnosis. The radiological manifestations may differ based on the infecting agent. The most common abnormalities are evidence of consolidation and effusion. Pneumatoceles, pneumothorax, 
are seen in Staphylococcus aureus and Klebsiella infections. Diffuse pulmonary infiltrations are seen in Legionella and Microphasma infections. Microbiological confirmation can be done using sputum for gram staining and culture. Also, we can use pleural fluid aspiration and do culture in cases where there is pleural effusion. Blood culture can also be done, but it may have a very low diagnostic yield. Rarely, antigen testing in urine for Legionella is done. Also, viral antigen testing also done very rarely. Now, let's move into the treatment in community acquired pneumonia. Generally, there are no restrictions in diet. It is important to have a rest appropriate to the level of illness. Hydration is important in the severely ill patient. Fever can be managed with paracetamol. It is important to avoid cough suppressants. If a syrup is requested, a mucolytic such as bromohexine can be prescribed. Oxygen is useful in a breathless patient. Once diagnosed, the first step in treatment in our setting is to decide on the likely organisms. This will help us to start an appropriate antibiotic early. Next, we need to decide on the severity of the pneumonia and select the antibiotic appropriate to the severity. Risk stratification of the patient is based on clinical and biochemical parameters. A score commonly used overseas is CURB-65. It is used as a guideline for admission. This is rarely useful because the blood urea results would take at least 5 to 6 hours. The more practical approach is to consider as severe any patient having any of the other criteria. As I mentioned previously, CURB-65 score evaluates the severity of community acquired pneumonia. There are 5 points and one point is given for each feature if it is present. New onset of confusion, urea levels more than 42 mg per deciliter, respiratory rate more than 30 per minute, blood pressure, systolic blood pressure less than 90 and diastolic blood pressure less than no equal 60, age more than no equal 65 years. Apart from the above features, there are other features that indicate severity of community acquired pneumonia. When there are associated comorbidities, metabolic acidosis, multilobal pneumonia, hyperglycemia, hyponatremia, and hypoxia. Patients who have community acquired pneumonia of low severity managed as outpatients, whereas other require inpatient therapy. Monitoring is extremely important in the management of community acquired pneumonia. Monitoring includes assessing the symptom severity, temperature, vital parameters, respiratory rate, and physical signs. Also, it is important to check on fluid balance and nutrition. Once the severity of pneumonia is decided, it is extremely important to commence the empirical antibiotic therapy. The antibiotics to use should be decided based on local antibiotic guidelines. In Sri Lanka, a macrolide such as clarithromycin or acithromycin may be used as therapy in patients with mild pneumonia. Such patients can be managed as outpatients. Patients with severe community-acquired pneumonia who are hospitalized, a combination of beta-lactam antibiotics and macrolides is recommended in guidelines. A respiratory fluoroquinolone such as levofloxacin can be used as monotherapy. In rare cases where pseudomonas is suspected, such as in patients with COPD, bronchiectasis, and in those with greenish-yellow sputum. In these cases, an anti-pseudomonal beta-lactam antibiotic such as piperacillin, tazobactam, meropenem, imipenem, or keftazidim should be combined with a fluoroquinolone such as levofloxacin. If Staphylococcus aureus is suspected, IV vancomycin should be added to the empirical regimen. If microbiological investigations yield an organism, the antibiotics should be changed based on susceptibility pattern. Most patients with community-acquired pneumonia 
respond within 72 hours of initiating therapy. Parenteral antibiotics can be switched to oral antibiotics after this duration if the patient is febrile and clinically improving. Total duration of treatment should be at least 10 days in our setting. A short duration of antibiotics run the risk of relapse or complications such as effusion or bronchiectasis. If the patient is failure to improve, consider an alternative diagnosis such as tuberculosis or presence of complications such as empyema. Check if the antibiotic is appropriate and think of superadded nosocomal infection. Another important cause to consider in patients with poorly resolving community acquired pneumonia is underlying structural lung disease such as bronchiectasis or bronchial carcinoma. Some of the common complications of community acquired pneumonia are metastatic infection, lung abscesses, and empyema. That's the end of today's review on pneumonia. If you have questions or suggestions, please mention in the comment sections and have a nice day.